We don't need to do anything. Okay. Yeah. All right, um, so just to introduce who's on the stage real quick here, we've got uh, Casey. You want to tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. I have been in the trailer industry since 2012 and running various departments, merchandising, marketing for a trailer parts distribution company named Redneck, who is now um, owned by Dexter. And what we do is we provide parts that basically could build and or repair any type of towable trailer that you pull behind a pickup truck. Um, and so that could be bumper pull or fifth wheel. And so we provide any part to build or repair, excluding lumber or raw steel. So with that, I've had ran different departments and then um, got an opportunity to be more involved with the business background that I have with the e-commerce stuff to implement kind of business process associated with um, what the e-commerce site needed to be like. So that's me. Thanks. We've also got David up here. Hi, everyone. My name is David Pick. Um, after spending a long tenure in the freight industry and then the remanufacturing industry, I said, you know what? That company's named Redneck. That sounds pretty fun. Um, so that's how I met Casey. Um, I started off as National Cast Manager and figured out that our customer experience sucked. Um, there was a lot of opportunity for improvement and where I took the reins as the Customer Experience Manager. And right now I manage roughly about 40, hey, could I have also have another one of those? Um, I, I manage about 40 CSRs at a centralized call center, um, which is a tough feat in itself. Um, also a lot of customer experience initiatives. Um, we, you know, we're a combination of a variety of different companies. Um, Dexter is kind of a Rolex of trailer parts, if you think about it. Um, and they, they're an outstanding manufacturer um, with outstanding quality. Um, they figured out we need to buy these distributors because they really know how to get to the marketplace. And we are taking some large companies and turning them into one. So it's something you read out in like Forbes article, right? Of taking all these brands, removing those brands from the buildings, removing it from the shirts, and saying we are one Dexter. Um, and that's also coming down to the customer experience. And uh, OX has just been a huge benefit to us, as well as the Zeno platform, and that's probably what you're all here to hear from us, right? Yeah. And on that note, my name is Kara Bordage. I'm the director of product at OX, so I had the opportunity to work with Dexco um, Dexter, uh, their Dexter Index implementation and got to know Casey and David and their product. Um, you'll also see Brian up here on the screen. Um, he's over here. We decided he was redundant to this presentation. So. Um, yeah, he was deprioritized in the backlog. Uh, so he's good sport about it. But if you have any questions on CTO stuff, that's a guy. So just kind of starting to walk through the digital transformation journey, um, Casey and David gave us a little bit of background on Dexter, but do you want to give us the, the full spiel, Casey? Yeah. So Dexter provides parts that can repair or build any trailer that's a towable um, behind a pickup truck. And that's anything from trailer axles, running gear, um, hitches, fenders, uh, ball mounts, anything related to that. And with that, Dexter also has a parent company above the distribution network that manufactures axles and running gear. So for vertical integration, we have a parent company that does manufacturing and um, of axles and other components um, related to brake parts and that type of thing. And then we distribute through a distribution network that's comprised of three legacy companies during a pretty quick acquisition process that went from seven branches to work with customers across the U.S., which would be trailer manufacturers or trailer dealers, to 50-plus locations. So with that came multiple ERP systems, multiple customer experience um, e-commerce sites, ranging from homegrown to magento repurposed to B2C style and that type of thing and then um, a very small B2C presence. So with that, we're trying to take all of those legacy companies and put them into one, one Dexter, one customer experience so that the customers that we service today have a fluid um, experience regardless of what legacy company they might have been buying through. So that led us to a strategy discussion last year um, in May of 2022 where we started the kind of discovery of what we want this to look like and then identified an ERP implementation that lacked 
any e-commerce solution that our customers were typically used to. So we were gonna do an ERP implementation without any way to support an online portal um, that comprised about eight to nine percent of our business that had been steadily growing from six to eight, six to seven, seven to eight over the last four or five years. And so knowing that, we found partner in OX with Profit as a um, marketing strategy company to build out a site in like a quick 90 days so that we could get all the requirements, have a very, very minimal MVP experience, but um, got it launched and accepted orders on day one and haven't really had any major hiccups since then, so. Oh no. You know, I think it's really important to also bring up the customer base and what type of customers we service. Um, so our customers are kind of like in four groups. The first would be the ones that build trailers. And you know, a lot of them, they have large manufacturing facilities, they're churning out lots of trailers, but a lot of them, man, it seems like every, every welder out there, they decide, hey, I want to start building trailers. And they might be working out of a the shed, they're working out of their house, and they go, man, it's really hard to find parts that go on trailers, I'd rather go to one source. So that's why we exist. The second type would be the guys that sell trailers. They might have a showroom with a lot of product. The final would be, okay, repair shops. A lot of trailers break down. We also have a variety of retail stores that you walk into today, and if you look at their shelves or you ask them, do you carry Dexter? They go, yup, we carry Dexter. So we span across the United States into Canada. It is very difficult to service this marketplace because there's thousands upon thousands. I can tell you from a testament from this week, I heard a customer going, huh, I had no idea Dexter bought Britain. And this is two years after the fact. So communicating to this customer base is very difficult. Um, so for, that's one of the challenges that we've faced, been faced with on implementing this platform. I you can talk now. My turn? Yeah. Thank you. Um, so as a part of that ERP implementation, um, the team at Dexter realized that they were no longer going to be able to support their e-commerce systems as they currently stood, uh, so came to us to go through a platform selection process. Um, so we spent some intense times together, gathering requirements, talking about what would be MVP, what was most important in light of the idea of speed to market, um, and needing to, for all intents and purposes, keep the cash register on. Um, and so we went through uh, three different platforms and compared those uh, did pros and cons. Um, I don't think that we're saying the first one out loud anymore. It feels like uh, it's been kind of a dirty word today. I'm not sure, that's just the vibes I'm getting. Um, and then really came down to Optimizely and Znode. And frankly, Znode just has the best out of the box feature set for B2B. Um, and again, speed to market was the most important thing here. Uh, so getting the uh, headless API approach um, to be able to <laughs> integrate with not only the new ERP, but also the old ERP too, um, and get that everything up and running as quickly as possible was a huge, huge driver for us. I remember whenever we were sitting in the room and I said, which one of your past clients implemented an ERP system in tandem with the new e-commerce experience? And I remember the face you gave me. Not, not many. Yeah. Or any. <laughs> or any. <laughs> or any. Um, it, so definitely ambitious. Throw a pin in the mix there too. And, and we're really rocking and rolling, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anything else to add on platform selection? You were there, you lived it. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. All right, so from there we created the roadmap. And Casey, you want to talk about um, how we got to those different feature sets for MVP and beyond? Sure. So we had um, multiple stakeholder interviews throughout a 90-day period to try to identify as many feature sets that are reasonable to add into an experience at an MVP level and then what our future state might look like. And so then that's going to be minimum, show your customer's price today, show inventory today, accept an order today. Um, to future state being a learning library, a training mechanism, a find your parts for any replacement X, um, you know, from a trailer widget standpoint, um, photo, I know our general manager of the distribution side wants a photo identification of a part so that if someone doesn't have the words or the technical knowledge to identify what that is, that they can at least find something. And with that came 
providing education and um, a repository for that for both our customer base today and a future B to C um, opportunity where we can absorb any um, business that might exist out there that's not currently in our ecosystem through the independent dealers that we work with today. Um, so all of these feature sets were identified with um, unique custom axles that we would be providing for our customers um, if they needed to do a very specific repair, if customers needed an axle um, that was specific to a new trailer that they were going to build that was unique from anything outside of um, what we had built before, in addition to replacement parts and how to find um, what that is for those customers. We sell a ton of kits and so it was trying to identify ways to provide inventory with what we would call a bundle or a build on demand kit, um, tire and wheel information where there's DOT registration requirements, selling into California where things cause cancer or can cause cancer. Um, and so, and then taking in what customers experience today and trying to blend that into a very quick build and an MVP side of what we're calling the Dexter Index today. So that took, I don't know, 25 features that were um, some unique, some very out of the box for Zenode and it made it a really good opportunity for us to build a site to accept an order on day one that our ERP migration um, moved over, so. And can you, either one of you, tell me a little bit more about the original Redneck trailer experience on the B2B side? So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this thing was, was great, okay? It was a SharePoint-based site, okay? <laughs> yeah, I knew you were gonna Don't laugh. laugh. Okay. okay, so yeah, you can see pricing, you can see availability, but with the availability option, right, we've got dozens of locations, it just bogged it down. So for you to look at availability, it was tough. Most of the buttons didn't work. Like we had stuff on there that says returns. People try to do a return. It wouldn't work. It's a great way. If you want a strategy of not accepting returns, just disable it. Okay. Um, there was a day, I remember we had about 30 days that it was down. And our IT team had to work with a consultant, a consultant, just to reinvigorate that integration. And it's embarrassing. And so we really saw the adaption rate or growth rate of that previous platform stay constant until COVID happened. And we all remember when COVID happened, right? We overreacted, we laid off people, we said, yeah, but then our industry just took off. Like people were buying trailers by the dozens, hundreds, and to where we needed the people. So we weren't able to pick up the phone when they were calling, so they were going to the platform. But even then, it didn't grow that much. So it really, like, if you look at the customer experience side of things, you know, this is helping because I don't know anybody in here, like does anybody not, is anybody here able to get as many people as you want to fill your seats at your building? If you do, let me know because I want to learn your secret. So right now it's like you look at how do we get customers to do the very easy things of pricing, availability, placing orders, and for our CSRs to do what they do best, help the customers through either a problem, parts identification, because we can't just train a CSR in 30 days in our industry. Because we carry everything from a little bolt all the way to an axle, and the axles aren't standardized. You know, we ha it takes roughly two years for a CSR to feel comfortable. Even then, they learn things new. Did I cover that answer? Yes, that was wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Right. You're having to sneeze everything to me. <laughs> what I like about you. <laughs> So just to illustrate that point, we've got a little before and after of the shopping cart experience. So one of the things that really helped us uh, make decisions during the speed to market phase was talking about the fact that anything that you could get out of the box that would take money was probably going to be better than what was currently out there. Um, and as part of the roadmap, obviously we've got a more modern website experience and we are working through all of the business processes around uh, taking payment in a more modern fashion, allowing people to pay invoices, and really getting a full B&B feature set. And then that kind of brings us to another really interesting piece of the build, which is the need for axle forms. So again, a unique business process, process to Dexter, um, and something that David's very close to. So I'm gonna talk about the previous process, and the case is gonna take all the glamour on the new process. So all, I, if you look at the light duty trailer industry, it's really, if there's some regulations in it, 
but anybody can build at any size, okay? So the width of the trailer, the weight it's gonna be carrying, so every axle is basically different. So when somebody adopts a trailer, right? They go to Facebook Marketplace, they buy a trailer, they find out the spindles are gone, they go, okay, I need a new axle. So they call us up and we have to ask them all these measurements. Here's the deal. If we get any of those members measurements wrong, the chances of that axle fitting another application is slim to none. So we would get with our customers and we would fax, yes, fax a copy of the axle form and walk them through all those little measurements, check boxing, entering stuff. They would sign the little bottom part and say, yeah, if, you, if it doesn't fit, it's, I'm gonna keep it, which you guys could understand. When you're dealing with a big customer, chances are they're gonna win, right? And then you take that form and gosh forbid, it would fall through the cracks, right? It gets sent to the CSR that's on vacation for a week. You've already elongated the process of fulfilling that axle. And then let's say they lost the axle form. There's so many instances that a piece of paper really is just not manageable when you have dozens of dozens of sites. And that's where Casey stepped in. Um, can you tell us a little bit about how long it would take for a CSR to work with a customer on this process, just from no. a call standpoint? No, that's a really good question. When you talk about a return on investment of a new tool. Um, so if a customer calls in and they're trying to identify an axle, it could take as short as probably 12 to 20 minutes. It could take as long as 45 to an hour. Okay, I see this being on the phone. And what usually happens, and this really does happen, is we go, okay, what's the spring center? What's that? Okay, it's this to this. Okay, hold on, I don't want you to hang up, I don't want to call you back because it's hard to get a hold of you, so I'm gonna go out to the shed and measure it, I'll be right back. He goes out, comes back in. Wait, does he have that accent all the time, or is this just, do you have a particular customer in mind? I'm, I'm just bringing up the redneck in me, okay? Got it. Just make and, sure. and so then it goes back, okay? And this message. All right, give me another minute. Okay, come back. The CSR knows her stuff, right? And goes, you know what? Those measurements you gave me don't pass my gut check. Are you sure you measured from here to here? Well, gosh darn it, I don't think I did, right? So that process took so long that that CSR could have missed some calls from some of our six digit rep sales revenue customers. And this customer might be buying just one axle from us. So it was clear that we needed to figure out how to put a better tool in place that the customer had the information, the pictures, they had the know-it-all right then and there to place that axle. Did that answer your question? Beautifully, thank oh, you. Okay. That was a perfect segue into our ongoing journey. So we do have a few um, important things on the roadmap for the future that are on the horizon. Uh, so continuing to migrate more Dexter brands onto Zenode, and uh, as they transition into the new ERP, we're constantly loading new customers, um, new locations, um, reskinning the project to revamp the brand look and feel. Um, Casey can talk about this one a little bit, just in terms of what we started with for MVP and where we took it. Did I just throw you a curveball? Yeah. Okay. We just wanted prettier pictures. Yeah, never mind. We had yeah. blue. It looks real nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's our marketing team came up to us because we were such a fast speed, right? The minute we had to implement that ERP system, the old SharePoint site died. Okay, and I remember that night when it happened. I was like, okay, we're doing this. Okay, so it, then that's where marketing jumped in because they were able to say, okay, well, we want better images, we want better colors. Blue is just way better on the eyes. So we were able to get to their needs and be able to provide a better experience. And the cool thing with the platform is they're gonna change their mind, right? They're gonna wanna change something different. And we have that flexibility with this platform. And I learned how to do that from Walter's um, presentation earlier today. Yes, Brian. Uh, quickly, uh, working with Zeno's dynamic attribute model, For those of you who didn't hear, is you know it's a dynamic attribute model? Yes. Sorry, yes. I had to some text on Yep, yep. That's what you're here for. Thank you. <laughs> um, we're also moving forward with Project Canada, which is basically just taking the partners that are already in their uh, disparate brands in Canada and rolling them into this more modern Zenote experience. 
Um, we're currently having a really great time assessing multi storefront versus single storefront and the pros and cons and impacts because both of them are very easy to do in Zenode. So when we say, hey Zenode, what should we do? They say, we can make either of them work. It's up to you. And then uh, continuing to uh, fully flesh out the feature set for B2B and hopefully rolling in some B2C as well. Yeah, it, our old website, the SharePoint site, you couldn't pay an invoice. I mean, that's kind of rudimentary, right? Like, we didn't get cash. I want to get cash. Now we have the ability to pay an invoice. And you should have seen my credit department when I showed them. They were pretty ecstatic. Okay, how do we get cash? Um, so we're, we're just in the beginning phase of this. Um, and we're, we're having fun with it. We've already exceeded, right, our, when you look at our percentage of sales, We've been, within six months, we've already exceeded where we were at. And that's exciting. Yeah. You know, and so what's gonna happen in another six months? But we gotta train CSRs, right? We gotta train the customer base. We gotta get contacted to the customer base. We don't even have a CRM. So it's like, how do we get to the customers? How do we get the information? How do we push it to them that they use it? Um, so we've got some challenges this year. So with that being said, shout out to Jen. Jen is the director of e-commerce over at Dexter. Uh, she just joined a couple weeks ago, uh, so we already kind of had this figured out from a presentation perspective, but a lot of this uh, new and exciting stuff is gonna be driven by her, so we're super excited. Well, thank you guys so much. Thanks. Thanks.